Good morning. Thank you for waiting. It's a Stockholm United Methodist Church. Our first service went a little later than expected, and so we're a little bit behind coming in, and Linda's going to be here in just a second. Uh, I'm Pastor Wally Schwartz, uh, and my wife Linda is the one who's with me, and you'll see her pop in. She's the one who's running down the She's aisle. She's running down the aisle right now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and uh, and we are just so glad to have you here with us today. Thank you for coming. Hi there. <laughs> <laughs> You're here. <laughs> I had to go post the songs for worship. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for doing that. Because we had a whole now bunch of Now you got something minute. to sing. See? That's good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, it's good to see everybody's names coming up there. It's, you know, I got to tell you, it really is wonderful, the, the family that we have, uh, both physically here and on, on, on Facebook. Isn't it great? I mean, it really is great. This morning at the 930 service, during prayer time, we were praying for some of you in the Facebook yeah. service and introducing you in the Facebook service to the people in the live congregation yeah. because they don't know who you are. And um, so that was kind of That's special, kind of cool, I thought, yeah. yeah. A kind of a cool blending together there. Mm -hmm. Well, let's open up with some music. Ted, do you have something for us today? Yes, yes, yes. Here we go. Does anyone have a bulletin? <laughs> There we go. Let's open the service with a call to worship. Come, let's sing to the Lord. Let's shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let's come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let's extol him with songs. For the Lord is a great God, a great king above all gods. Come, let us worship. Mm -hmm. Well, that means I gotta get the guitar. It does. All right, let's do that. <laughs> that means I'll come up too. That's right. And yep. Steve's here today with us. We got the band we all got together. Our band here, don't we? Now let's do this. Let's. Uh, I'm gonna move this just a little bit so we can kind of see it and get everybody in the picture here today. How's that? Everybody socially distanced from each other and, <laughs> and singing. All right. Let's start out with a really old time fashion welcoming song. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it.
Yes, it is. It's a wonderful day that God has made, whether the sun is shining or whether it's cloudy out. It's another day to be alive, to walk with the Lord, to walk with God. Well, we have an old-time hymn here we're going to sing today, and i got to change my glasses to see it. But uh, how many of you know, are you washed in the blood? We've sung that before. Uh, it's a beautiful old song about, uh, well, about salvation's all about it. Get a little pick here. Hold on a second. Here we go. Brighten it up a little. Have you been to Jesus? Sing power. Are you watching?
<laughs> let's, let's pray. Father, thank you so much. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, who came and gave his life and bled on the cross and died for us and rose again, that we might walk with him and know him and know you. And we ask you this morning, let our hearts be wide open, let the hearts of every single person that is able to hear this this morning receive a blessing from you, Lord, uh, an awareness, a consciousness of your grace and power in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's continue on. We got more stuff to do. I just want to make uh, one small Go announcement ahead. that this Saturday we're going to have a work day here at the uh, sanctuary and over the grounds. We're going to clean up the yard and do a few carpentry projects. So anybody would like to come out and help for just even a, an hour or two would be greatly appreciated. All right. So hopefully we'll see some of you there. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Bye. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great. Wow. Bye, Steve. Bye bye. Bye bye. Well, here we are. It is so wonderful when he is there doing percussion. Yeah, Steve, Steve. appreciate that. That percussion it sure adds a lot. <laughs> sure does. Yeah. Something's. Hmm? We're like glowing. Yeah, it's something about that. Let's try this. Let's tap that up there. No, I can't get that to do. <coughs> there it is. Down here, here it is. Maybe move it down a, up a little. That better, a little. No. Well, we'll twist it around. So one of these days we're gonna. Usually, if you t turn it uh, down, I made it worse, right? <laughs> then try it up a little. How's that? That's a little, a little better. better. A little better. Okay. Yeah. All righty. We looked like we were. Well, we're kind of sitting in the glory. In the glory. In the glory. I got glory to God. We were right in the middle of it. Yes, we were. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the best way to be. Well, let's just turn this around. Go ahead now, Linda. Let's, what do we got to do next year? We got to do some other things. We do. Well, it's prayer time, of course. Yeah, of course. Um, but I would like to start with a prayer. Okay. And as you all might be putting in, typing in some prayer requests. Mm -hmm. um, did you just move it again? Yeah, just move a little closer to it. Just step over a little closer to it. I think we'll be able to get it. Okay. It just, it's a little, it's it, the camera, because you're using your phone, what happens is it goes for the brightest thing and pen, it kind of measures it itself. So. Okay. Well, uh, we'll see if it's self corrects. We'll, we'll, we'll try, we'll work on it here. Don't worry about it. Okay. Go ahead. So this is election week, and I just would like to say a prayer um, for us all to mm -hmm. join together in a prayer prior to it um, <coughs> and have it stand out on its own. Okay, all right, go ahead. So God of healthy disagreements, mm. God of principled stands, we need not have the same mind to sit around the same table. We need not share precise beliefs to fit within a home. We need not speak <coughs> the same dialect to be part of a loving family or part of a group of friends. And we need not to see the world the same, to know that it's big enough for all of us. As we hold firm to what we know is right, may we honor the ground where others stand so that more of the earth and more of our imagination may be hollowed in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Linda. That's great. Appreciate that. There we go. I think that'll help. Well, we'll fuss with this till we get it right. Yeah, sorry but, about that. Uh, sorry about that. I know it's a little, a little awkward. But the uh, we, this is our time when we always have our prayer requests and praise reports for you know anybody who would like to share them. And if you would like to type yours in, uh, we sure would uh, uh, be well, happy to hear them. Go ahead, Linda. Why don't you read them? I have to get them up. Well, we have definitely have a prayer request for our friend Sue Rikansky, who was, was admitted to the hospital last night. Yes. And um, there was fear that maybe perhaps she had a heart attack, which she did not. Mm -hmm. And so just prayers for her recovery and, and them to find out what's going on. Yeah. Let's see. I don't see any here. Do you see any up there? No, I, I don't. I see one here. Uh, Leonora agreed, and it's Pam. You're with us here today. Pam, do you have a prayer request? Oh, I have. I have. Yes. Go ahead. Um, you can just move from there. That's okay. okay. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, first of all, Qu um, but but sh kind of short, like okay. They can hear you real well. I have a heart murmur, and I have to go to a um, nuclear stress test tomorrow. Okay. Prayer for a heart murmur. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the last one is that at this point, I have no choice, but I do have to take a chemo pill. Mm-hmm. Okay.
Okay, well, okay. we're going to pray for you. Uh, Pam was sharing that she has a uh, suspicious thing from mammography uh, and needs to be looked into, and she is going to need to take a chemo pill, uh, which she doesn't really want to take, and she's going to have to do it. So we're just going to really pray for her uh, and ask uh, for, uh, for God's blessing to be on her with that. And, and for peace through the process. Yeah. Well, we're just having a lot of problems here. I don't know. There we go. There we go. All right. I can't figure out this Well, is. you know, you never know, right? We don't Nothing know. Nothing ever goes right. Uh, Pam, I would like you to ask you uh, for um, a favor. Would you go back and turn off these uh, big lights oh, in sure. here? I think that'll help us a lot. Well, anyone else? Well, I want to share a couple of prayer requests uh, myself while we're sitting here bathed in the glory of God. <laughs> um, we have uh, uh, found out at, at uh, the place where I work uh, that we had um, uh, exposure to COVID. Now, I found out that I have uh, antibodies, which means I had it at one point, uh, but I'm not infectious now. We had both tests done. And thanks to our ownership of our dealerships, we really appreciate that. Uh, that's where I work my regular job outside the church. And, uh, and, uh, but we did find out one person was uh, 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 positive, and that is uh, our, our good friend, John Sauter. John's with us every Sunday. He's on here. And uh, John, good morning to you. Uh, and uh, was with John's permission, uh, I just want to share that with you. He's having to quarantine, and we want to pray for him uh, for whatever um, symptoms and things happen that, that this just passes over him. Yeah, you know, this is not a big deal for him. So uh, let's remember John. Uh, also, I have two cousins, uh, both of whom are very seriously. Um, fighting things right now. My cousin uh, Frank, who had a heart attack, has been in the hospital, uh, and my cousin Carl, uh, who's a Methodist minister. Uh, yeah, he became a Methodist minister later in life, and, um, uh, and he is uh, up, upstate New York in Utica. Uh, he is in the hospital with COVID and with double pneumonia, we understand. So we are now praying for him as well. Uh, we have also a lot of uh, uh, requests here this morning, too, too many to enumerate, all from the early service. But we want to pray for Sue Rikansky, uh, our good friend uh, uh, in the church here who's uh, out in California right now getting tests, right? You right, I mentioned, sure? I, I already that? talked about him. Jira said that. <laughs> I wasn't listening. Anyways. You know, uh, <laughs> all of us know how that goes. All wives know that. And probably all husbands, too, right? There are those moments. We're That's often true. thinking about our own th different things as we're doing this, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That's right. But, but, of course, Sue, if you're out there, we love you so much, and you're in our prayers. And, of course, mm -hmm. there's always, we always are praying for Dennis, for his full yes, recovery um, and a miracle healing, mm -hmm. and, um, and for Nancy. Mm -hmm. And Bob's day. foot. And Bob's and foot. Bob's had foot. surgery on his foot. He's had, Not he's for had, Bob, just for Bob's foot. Just for his foot. Just, for, just the foot. <laughs> we, asked, we asked Bob how he's doing this morning. He said, well, it's still attached. <laughs> That's good news. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> There's always a positive side to look at, but he is, we want to pray that his foot completely heals. We want to pray for Peter, for his respiratory problems, and for Fred. A bunch of people here. And for Dave and, and uh, Larry Joe, welcoming them home. They mm -hmm. have been on the Facebook service every week with all of you. Every week. And they were up in Vermont, and they come back here for the winter, and so they were here in the live service today. So welcome home to them. We are very happy to see them, and we will miss them on Facebook. They said it was kind of hard to get up and get out of their pajamas to come to church. They today. kind of liked drinking coffee and watching the service. Can't blame them. <laughs> but there's something wonderful about when you come together that pops it into another dimension. I have one more prayer. Go ahead. It's, um, I have a prayer that there will be many donations for Regina's pumpkin contest. Yeah, the pumpkin. Um, yeah, I mean, I do. Yeah. Because I would really like us to, to um, and I know that some people had, had a hard time donating yes. last week because there was something... Some that kind of little a, yeah, thing was going around the circle and around of doom and was people going on, weren't yeah. able to, to so I'm, I'm praying that they're not going to forget to put in their guesses and mm -hmm. help Regina out and so that we can all be blessed by her music yeah and if you're having a problem using that let us know because we don't know that, we don't know you know what right? it's happening so if, if there's a problem using the donate button uh, please just give us an email or a call or something let us know and we'll get fixing that right away yeah. So, what do you want to say? You want to say when are we going to take this drawing? When are we going to? We're going to do it the week before Thanksgiving. The week before Thanksgiving. So you got a little time, but 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 make oh, believe you don't have any time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's pray together. And then pass it forward and, and pass it to your, um, share the post in, on our Facebook page to um, 
your page, perhaps, if you're inclined. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Father, we ask you, Lord, for each and every one of these requests this morning and others that weren't made here or might be in people's hearts or that we might have missed, but, Lord, you know each and every one of them. So, Father, we lift them up to you. We ask for your supernatural touch and healing and protection. Father God, for those that are sick, Lord, those that are fighting COVID and, and fighting other things, Lord, in their lives, or whether it's cancer or whatever it is, Father God, we lift them up to you. And each and every one that touches our lives, Father, we pray, help us to know how to bless and encourage and strengthen. And Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name, we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Hey, I want us to make an announcement about something, too. Um, we, uh, it's that time of year when we do the shoeboxes for Operation Christmas Child. And uh, we have some flyers here for you. We're going to be getting some more in, too. And if you'd like to pack a Christmas, uh, a little shoebox full of Christmas toys for kids that get sent all over the world, uh, we're, we participate in that, and we invite you to, to do that with us. And we will have a collection here. Uh, we're look, we're kind of like looking at the 15th of November, even though the collection week is the week following it, because sometimes people, you know, procrastinate. And uh, so you bring it on in here, and, and we'll have it ready to go. So very good. That's the news. That's the news. Um, we have some music. We do for our offertory time. Mm -hmm. uh, Ted, would you like to do that for us? Sure. All right. Let's let's move that over there and, and uh, get Ted in the picture again. Holy Spirit, we welcome you.
Thank you, Ted. Yeah, it's just amazing. Wow. Wow, that was just plain beautiful. Look at that. In the, wow. in the first service when Ted sang the song, mm -hmm. I was sobbing. Yes. It took me through the doxology mm -hmm. to, um, to gather myself. It's very, very, very beautiful. beautiful song. Doxology, please join us in singing this from wherever you may be. love that so so I wanted to um, just take a minute to talk to you about just for a minute about Christian meditation mm -hmm. which is more commonly called contemplative prayer that has been my practice for quite a, quite a long time I don't do it as um, like a fish like you don't see me sitting with my hand my legs crossed in that sense but I will just be sitting it's in a relaxed state. But for me, what has happened over the years is that that particular practice um, has opened up an entirely new experience of Christianity. Um, in the sense that when I would pray the, the, the way we would normally pray, like the way we do here, I still pray like that you know, as often as I, as kind of throughout the day in my conscious mind. Mm -hmm. But contemplative prayer, is going to another level. It's like going to a different layer of yourself. And it's listening. It's, but your mind is not the active. Your heart is. And so instead of, um, instead of thinking about what you should pray about, because that's the, other, that's the voice that we have. That's not even really us in a sense. It's our voice. And then we say the words. But contemplative prayer is more um, quiet. And it is allows us to reach places like, think about when you see a child look up at you and all of a sudden you see the complete divine love in that child, the innocence or the vulnerability, or when you are in love or you're with your husband who you have been loved for many years even, and you have those moments where um, you see God in him, um, or those times where suddenly you realize that you love yourself, like you know, that you're able to gather yourself. Those, that is, that is not you thinking something about that person. That moment is God. Like that is God in them. You are seeing God in them in that moment. Those moments that come alive. And contemplative practice, for me, allows me, or and I think those who practice it, to come to that space more, more often mm -hmm. and, and to become more vulnerable. And, and most importantly, um, to kind of touch the kind of compassion and unconditional love for others and ourselves that Christ mm -hmm. asks us to. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to kind of introduce that to you, mm -hmm. just really mm -hmm. spur Powerful the moment and, um, and invite anyone who's interested to send me a, a, a um, message on Facebook and or either privately or at the, stock, at the church page, if you'd like to kind of participate in a like kind of Zoom class about that mm. and, um, and to either discuss it or because I think that there are times where our Christianity, you know, we, we come, we have those, we have those times in our, in, our, in our walk that are 
alive and mm. vibrant. And then it's not that sometimes we go flat, sometimes we doubt, sometimes we don't really know what to do with it because it's not really fulfilling us, yeah. but we don't know why. Um, and this for me has really ch changed that over the years. And um, so I invite anyone to join me in that if you'd like mm. to. It's very good. You didn't know I was going to do that, did you? No, maybe I'll join you too. I didn't either. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, that would be great if you'd like That's to join. Great. That would be wonderful if yeah, you joined. That's pretty cool. Mm. So um, now what? I got busy talking and I forgot. I don't know. What were we scripture doing? Reading? Anybody remember where we were at? <laughs> scripture reading. Can you give me the scripture reading? Scripture reading. Yes, the scripture reading. The scripture reading is right here. And uh, so, I, so I would just like to also <laughs> make a note, tell you that for those in our Facebook audience that don't, or congregation that don't know um, this, Wally has a full-time job other than this, than being a pastor. Yeah. And so, and he's when when co when the pandemic was happening, he was off from work. Now he's not. So we don't <laughs> always get to communicate very much about a lot of the details. And that's why we look like we're not on top of it, but we we well we are. We just uh, we, we just, just forget certain things sometimes. Yeah, a few corners are missing. That's all. Yeah. Um, number uh, down here, Romans chapter five is the scripture reading for the day. If you want to read along in your Bible or take a look online, is Romans chapter five, verses one to eleven. Therefore, having been justified in faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus mm -hmm. Christ, through whom also we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we exult in hope of the glory of God. And not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, mm -hmm. and perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope. Mm -hmm. And hope does not disappoint. Because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has given it to us. For while we were still helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous man, man though perhaps for the good man someone would dare even to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were, not yet, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than that, having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through this, through him. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of the son, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only this, but we also exult in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't print that out for you in the in the big well, I was today, wondering what, what translation this is. That's New American Standard. I, I'm a fan of the... I, new, studying, I love mm. New American Standard, but when mm. we're reading, right. uh, just for the record, I, I prefer Common English Bible because it is easier to... Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's different, there's different levels in, in translations, and some are more literal, and some are more... They take more, more liberties, make it sound like better English. So, so uh, when you study, you, know, you kind of want to look at several of them. And, and uh, some of the ones that are a little more, well, they're more a little choppier sometimes. Yeah, so sorry about my choppiness there. That's not you. <laughs> well, I also have new glasses that are that oh, really? have the three oh, different. Oh, let's see. Let's see your new glasses. You got the three. three well, they're lenses just Walgreens them. glasses, but they're but they are um, they have the progression. Whoa. So I'm 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 not seeing quite as nor like I normally do. Anyway, enough of me. Love you. <laughs> All right, we will see you in a few minutes. <laughs> we have we have time now to talk about a message, and we always try to start out with a funny little story or something today. Well, today I don't have a story. I have a list. How do you like that? I got a list of things uh, to read to you to uh, see if you find them funny. <laughs> okay. Um, this is uh, called The Joy of Being Over 70. Now, I don't know how old you are. Uh, if you're already over 70, you might want to say it's a joy of being eight, over 80. And if you're over 80, you might want to say it's a joy of being over 90. And if you're over 100, you're going to have to even go further. We have one member of our congregation, and I don't know if you're hearing this this morning, but Lillian Bott, are you out there? We love you. She, Lillian is, those of you who don't know her, Lillian, she's been a member of this church for many, many years. She is 99 years old. Wow. Wow. And, and she's full of life and faith. And boy, wow, Lillian, God bless you today. <laughs> we pray that you just have a 
she lives kind of far away to yeah. come on Sundays, but she come, her son takes her there every Mother's Day. Really yes, beautiful. every Mother's Day we see Lillian, and Lillian, now you get to, to see us on, uh, on Facebook, and so we're glad you're here. Well, okay, back to the joke, all right? <laughs> so make this age any age you want, um, but here it is, the joy of being over 70. Number one, kidnappers are not very interested in you. <laughs> Number two, in a hostage situation, you're the first person they let go. <laughs> Number three, no one expects you to run into a burning building. Nobody expects you to run at all. <laughs> Number four, people will call at 9 p.m. and say and ask, are you still up? <laughs> Number five, people no longer view you as a hypochondriac. <laughs> Number, <laughs> Number six, there's nothing to left to learn the hard way. <laughs> I like that one. Number, number, what were they, number six, number seven. Things you buy now won't wear out. Oh, that's not so good. Number eight. You can eat dinner at 4 p.m. Who cares? Number nine. You, hear, you enjoy hearing about other people's operations. <laughs> number ten. You have a party and your neighbors don't even realize it. <coughs> Number 11, you no longer look at speed limits as challenges. <laughs> All right, number, number 12, you quit hold, trying to hold your stomach in no matter who walks in the room. Amen. Number 13, you sing along with the elevator music. <laughs> I like that. That's my favorite one. You sing along with the elevator music. Yeah, elevator music is getting better and better these days, isn't it? <laughs> Number, number, where are we at? Number 13, is it? Yep. Your eyes won't get much worse. <laughs> number 14, that long investment in health insurance, it's finally beginning to pay off. <laughs> number 15, your joints are more accurate than the National Weather Service. Amen. Number 16, last one, ready? Okay, here it is, number 16, drum roll. If Steve was here, we could have a drum roll. There we go. Your secrets are safe with your friends because they can't remember them. <laughs> All righty, well, there you go. There are 16 different, there are 70 different reasons why it's good to get older, and, and uh, well, we'll take a, every benefit a, we can. What? I have a friend who, who's a counselor. Yeah. And she had a business card when she turned 50. Yeah. It says, um, so-and-so, counselor, confidentiality assured, I remember nothing. <laughs> I remember nothing. <laughs> well, anyway, um, today we want to talk, today is our Communion Sunday. Oh, and by the way, I should give you a little clue in on that. If you didn't see it on the internet this morning or on, on Facebook this morning, um, we're going to have communion in a few minutes when, when Pastor is done with all of his talking. And uh, so we're all ready to go with it. Are you? Uh, if you want to go and get, you get your bread and get some juice or whatever you have to drink, um, you can get whatever you have. And bring it on over, and then we'll be ready to go. Okay? All right. Well, now let's take a look at, 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 at uh, uh, some thoughts here I have today. I, I want to share with you, you know, the, that word that uh, I asked Linda to read out of Romans. Um, there's a wonderful verse that particularly strikes me out of that. It says in verse 9, that God, well, it says just before verse 9, you know, it talks about how somebody, it's hard to die for somebody else. Maybe for somebody really good, you might die. But Jesus came and died when we were sinners, when we were like alienated from God. We weren't his friends. We weren't good people. And he died anyway for us. And it says, if, uh, if he would do that, then how much more than being justified by, the, by his blood will also be saved from the wrath of God through him? Hmm. Interesting thought. Interesting thought, because, you know, you're either one side or the other side, you know. Either you're walking with God or you're walking with yourself or some, something else. You're, you're something other than God. And it may sound simplistic, but some things in life are <laughs> simplistic. And that really is true. You're either on the side of being friends with him or, or you're alienated from him. And I want to share with you a little story uh, about when I was a kid, uh, something that, that came to my mind that uh, I just, I, I think illustrates it really well. I was about six or seven years old, I think. And I was in the living room one night before dinner. My dad was working on some kind of project, fixing something. And uh, 
Then my mom was getting dinner ready. He went in the kitchen to kind of get some stuff ready with my mom, I think, for dinner. And I had a few minutes, you know, in, in the living room, and I went over and I looked at his tape measure. It fascinated me as a kid. And I took it and I pulled it out and put it back and pulled it out and put it back. I thought, this is a pretty cool thing, you know? And uh, so we used to have a fireplace, <clears throat> and, uh, and, I, and the fire was in there. There some hot coals in there. And I went over there to the fireplace and thought, mm, this is pretty cool. I'll make it really long. I'll stick it in there and stick sticking things in the fire, right? So I'm poking it around in the fire and playing, having a good time, interesting time with this thing. And, and then I pulled it out of the fire, and to my horror, oh, no. The whole end, like the last first three inches of it were all black. They burned. The, the paint burned off it. You couldn't read it. And I realized, oh, no, I ruined it. <laughs> and I stuck it. I, I, what do I do? And I was too embarrassed and too, too embarrassed and too afraid of, of you know, admitting that, you know, what I had just done. So I, I stuck it in my pocket. So we all went and we had dinner together. Well, after dinner, you know, getting all back out to doing what we're going to do. My dad went back in the living room to fix the little project he was working with. He couldn't find his tape measure. He needed a tape measure. You ever been in that situation where you can't find the stupid tool you need, right? He's looking for it and looking for it. Where did I put it? Where did I do with it? I just had it here. I can't find He was getting ready to tear his hair out. My mom was trying to help him find it, you know. And my mom looked at me and she noticed a bulge in my pocket. You know, she'd asked me if I'd seen it. I said, no, no, I haven't seen that. No. And so the bulge in my pocket, she said, come over here, Wally. And then I went over and she felt my pocket. She said, take that whatever's in your pocket out. And I took it out. There was the tape measure. Oh, man, was I caught red-handed. Red-handed. I was mortified, embarrassed, and scared that I had done something really wrong. Well, you know, my parents were pretty cool because they... Uh, you know, they realized, I guess, that I was mortified <laughs> and I'd given myself enough punishment for it. And they just told me, listen, don't ever do that again. If you do something, you come and tell us you don't and, and don't play with your dad's tools, you know, in the fire. You know, I said, OK, OK, OK. And after that, everything was fine again. Right. We're, fellowship was restored. We were I was reconciled with them. Everything was cool again. But man, I got to tell you, in those moments leading up to that, I was mortified, just mortified. The worst feeling in the world was over me because now I was scared of my parents. Rather than wanting to be with them, I was scared they're going to find out. And how am I going to hide this thing? And where do I go next? That's just what Adam and Eve felt in the garden, right? Isn't that what the story says? They, they, they transgressed what God told them, the one thing God told them not to do, and they did it. They both did it. And then... It says God was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, it says. A time that they must have loved because that's when they could be with God. And now they're scared. They're scared. They're just as scared as I was with the thing in my pocket. It was exactly the same thing. And, you know, you don't have to be really old and, and theologically cult, you know, uh, educated to, to get this because this lies at the foundation of everything. Is your heart an open book to God? Can God, are you letting God see everything or are you trying to hide something in your pocket? Is there something that you're doing, something in your life that, that's keeping you from all that the Father has for your life? You know, God has a lot of things planned for each one of us, wonderful things, things beyond our imagination. But, you know, we, he can't just give it to us because we destroy ourselves with it. I remember a, a fellow named John Paul Jackson, a, a prophetic fellow, that uh, I was listening to one night, some, some years back, maybe 20 years ago, I don't know, it was a while ago. Um, and he was talking about how he had a vision about being caught up into heaven. It was amazing, the things he saw. And then he had to come back to earth, and when he came back to earth, he, got, he, he came back to consciousness like so depressed that he was here in this world where all this beauty wasn't. And he got a little angry with God, he said, God, he said, just give me one drop of that little power I saw in that vision, and I could go and I could clear out the hospitals. I could heal the sick and raise the dead. I could do all kinds of things. And the Lord said to him, I can't give it to you because the adulation that would come from that would crush you. Think about that. Are you able to bear what God would would do with you. You know, it's no secret. I mean, it's no, it's no surprise, I should say, that Jesus himself, the Son of God, 
was impelled first thing. As soon as the Holy Spirit, you know, the, the, he had got baptized by John and the Holy the dove came down, the Holy Spirit came down in the form of a dove and landed on him. And there was a voice from heaven that said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him, right? No sooner did this great thing happen that immediately the Holy Spirit impelled him to go out into the wilderness. And for 40 days and 40 nights he fasted. He was brought to the end of his, almost ready to be a dead man. And then the enemy came and, it, and, and hit him with temptations. He was tested in his weakness, in his absolute weakness. Why would, the, why would the Holy Spirit do that? Why would God the Father lead him to do that? Because he had to be emptied of himself. He had to not be regarding what was going to happen, what, what, what he could get out of it. Remember one of the things the, the devil offered him was, come down, bow down, worship me, I'll give you everything. It's been given into my hands to do that. Jesus said, no, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And in the, in the, right to the very end of, uh, he could have died 40 days, 40 nights out in the, in the wilderness with no food. He must have been a skinny guy at the time. Yet he passed the test. Would you pass a test like that? God's testing you. There are people, there are those of you out there and all of us in, in, ultimately, we all get tested. Abraham got tested. He was told to take his son that he loved, the son that he waited for, the promised son of God, the God, Isaac that God had promised him. And then he was told to go and sacrifice him. What the heck? It was a test to see, would you do it? God didn't really make him sacrifice him. But he didn't know that. He had to go forward and listen and be willing to lose everything again. Are you willing to lose? the other things in your life you're not willing to lose? I guess that's the question, right? If there's things in your life that you want to hold on to, it's going to keep you from the grace of God in your life. It's going to keep you. It's going to put you on the other side. It's, it's carrying around something in your pocket, <laughs> you know, that you shouldn't have. It's only when you let everything go to God that God can then trust you and that God can pour out his spirit through you in fuller measure than you've ever seen. Because, see, the Holy Spirit makes you look a lot better than what you are. <laughs> I was at a pastor's meeting, this was many years ago, and I remember somebody said this, you know. He said, the Holy Spirit makes us look a lot better than we are. Because God does things in our lives and does things through us, and people see those wonderful things, and then they attribute it, they, they think somehow that's part of you. And <clears throat> it's really not, it's God. And you're inside, you're full of all your fears and disillusions and all the other things you have, you know. And then you see God work through you in a wonderful way. Well, you know, God knows. He knows your heart. And he knows your weakness. That's why Jesus even told the disciples, says, look, you've got to wash your feet. You know, you're not taking another bath, but you've got to wash your feet every day because you're, you're walking through this world. God wants you to walk with purity and power. He wants you to be full of his grace. And that's why Jesus cleansed you with his blood. That's why with, when we have communion here today when we take the lord's supper together the power in that you see you and i are lost apart from him but he shed his own blood for you and for me that we could have a way to god and that every day every day that's what we live by that's what we walk on we walk not because i'm a righteous guy or a good guy i'm left alone i'm a bad as the worst guy so are you so only as we walk with him and we let the blood of Christ cleanse us from sin every day do we have that kind of reconciliation with God that I found with my folks after I confessed, after I was forced to confess and show them that. How good I felt after that. I felt reconciled. No longer did I fear them. No longer was I full of shame. One of the wonderful things about being forgiven by Christ is the release from shame. No longer is there anything to shame you because you have his life living in you. And if his life is living in you, you know what? The Father blesses Jesus constantly. And if he's in you, you're going to catch that blessing too. That's how it works. <laughs> That's just how it works. Yeah. I saw a, uh, I, I just want to close today with a, uh, a, cool little, uh, <laughs> a cool little story I read. Um, <laughs> illustrating how sometimes things can, we can say the right words and, and, and not quite get it. Uh, there's a story about a New Year's Eve uh, swa a gathering of some 
event uh, at London's Garrick Club. It says British dramatist Frederick Lonsdale was asked by Seymour Hicks to reconcile with a fel fellow member. The two had quarreled in the past and had never restored their friendship. You must, Hicks said to Lonsdale, it's very unkind to be unfriendly at such a time. Go over there now and wish him a happy new year. So Lonsdale crossed over the room and he spoke to the guy that he hated. He said, I wish you a happy new year, but only one. <laughs> I wish you a happy new year, but only one, right? <laughs> you see, when the spirit of God is in you, there's an endless flow of love and grace. But if you're doing it on your own, <laughs> you really don't do it too well. And that's what it's like. That's what it's like. You just can't get out all the love and forgiveness that really comes from God. Well, today uh, we're, we're here and we have our Lord's Supper to take together. So I hope you were able to get some, uh, some bread and some drink uh, to join us. Uh, let's pray together and, uh, and enter into that, all right? Oh, Father God, we thank you so much for the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the blood that he shed on the cross, for, the allowing, for him allowing his body to be broken, Lord, in obedience to you for our sake. That, Lord, that the, the, the punishment for sin that would fall upon us instead falls upon him, fell upon him. And, Lord, that we are set free and justified and reconciled to you by believing in it. So, Lord, today we open up our hearts to you. We invite you to come and live in us. Holy Spirit, come and fill us with a consciousness of the presence of our Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, Wendy, would you like to join me again? And uh, we have over here our, our bread and our, our drink. And uh, maybe you could hand that over here to me. Would you do that? Thank you. Let's do the bread first. <clears throat> On the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread. And he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take this and eat of it, all of you. It is my body. It is broken for you. Do this as often as you will in remembrance of me. Father, we don't come to your table trusting in our own righteousness or presuming anything, but only opening up our hearts and that, Lord, that we got nothing, but you got it all. And we ask you, Lord, oh, let us always walk with you. Lord, let us always have your cleansing power and forgiveness in us. In Jesus' name. Would you like to take a piece? Take a piece. Put that down. Thanks. And in the same way, he took the cup. And having blessed it, he gave it to his disciples and said, take this and drink of it, all of you. It is my blood which is shed for the remission of sins. Drink of it, all of you, as often as you will, in remembrance of me, O oh Lord. Let the blood of your covenant always wash over us, cleansing us from sin, making us fit to walk with you. Shall we eat together? Mm. Mm. Thank you. Mm. 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 Well, here we go. Buster wanted some too. We always give Buster a little taste of everything. Well, I guess that brings us pretty much to the close of where we are today. We're so glad you're with us. We are so glad we have the opportunity to be with you, right? 
We hope we always encourage you. And we hope that you come in here. We'll always make you part and of our fellowship. Keep praying for our leaders this week. And, yes. um, and bring out rock the boat, as they say. I like that. You rock know, the but boat? Rock the boat. Whatever your boat may be. Oh, rock, I'll rock, rock the, the boat. boat. Okay, I get it. It's just good to... When I went and put my boat in the ballot box mm -hmm. the other day, um, I'm, I'm one of those independents that really has a great interest and doesn't vote by party. Mm -hmm. And um, so when I went to the box and I, and I put it in, it just felt like it's one of those moments you think, I belong to this country. I am, like I belong here and I'm, my voice counts. And it was just a sweet little moment. You know? <coughs> Powerful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let's pray for, pray for what happens, whoever wins the election. Exactly. And wherever, whatever happens there, that, that reconciliation and unity comes to America that, um, that afterwards, whatever, whatever way it goes, um, we can all that that spirit of, of us working together, mm -hmm. be um, one one people, one country. I was going to say Trump's all, but that wouldn't be appropriate well, in this case. Do I, I didn't. <laughs> I, did, I meant it literally as the word. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, well, it's kind of like our names. May the shorts be with you, right? <laughs> you say it, and it comes up through a name. Well, anyway, let's uh, let's close together today, and uh, with, Ted, a, with a hymn. Yes, with a hymn. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot the hymn. My goodness. Well, thank you, Ted. Let's go to Ted. Let's go to Ted. Blame you, actually. There we go. What do we got today, Ted? Let's see. There's power in the oh, blood. Oh, power in the blood. We can't, <laughs> can't not have that one. All right, let's do it. Ted. Yep. Well, we want to <clears throat> have a chance to say goodbye and to have a benediction here today. And so let's close that down and get it so we can all be seen. Uh, by the way, a little announcement uh, here, uh, just so you know. Um, we uh, started this week uh, just putting uh, these services onto uh, YouTube. 
So if you stop, if you, if you, for any reason, if you want to find them there, uh, you can go on to Stockholm United Methodist Church. Uh, type that in; it'll come up. Uh, actually, more of them right now are on under Pastor Wally Schwartz. Yeah, and and you can th this way if you want to ever share one with someone, you can yeah. or find an old one. It might be easier than scrolling down a Facebook page. Yeah, you can archive them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. It's good. Progress. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's uh, join together in a, in a word, okay? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and may you walk this week with an open heart, cleansed and clean with Jesus. Amen. 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 Have a wonderful, wonderful week. God bless you. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week.